Today is the first day that I've made it to the coast since lockdown began. I've cycled here with my trusted bike. It's taken me five weeks to finally get here and it has, I have to say, it's probably the longest I have gone without going to the coastline in my whole entire life. And it's been quite emotional getting here today, I have to say, and it's so beautiful to be here on such a lovely warm day. Before I take the long cycle back home, it sort of reminded me being here about my quest to travel around Scotland and photograph every lighthouse in this country. And while I can't do that just now with the current restrictions, I realised that I've never actually sat down and explained to you all why I'm doing this quest, what the quest is all about, and potentially how you guys can get involved and maybe help me complete this photography mission when it's safe for me to get out and travel around Scotland once more. So let's cycle back home and I'll sit down and speak to you all about that when I get there. Across the ocean, I see it flash. A beacon of hope of which I catch. A comforting feeling runs over me as I enjoy the view that sets me free. Against the elements, it never fails to save the vessels against the gales. A guiding light so full of power, the world would be a darker place without this tower. So that was just a little poem that I've written during lockdown about my love and connection with Scotland's lighthouses. Now, it became very clear to me the other week that although I've mentioned that I'm doing this mission around Scotland to photograph every lighthouse in the country, I've never actually sat down and properly spoken to you about why I'm doing it, my reasons behind it, and why lighthouses mean so much to me. And a few people have asked me this on social media, so I thought it's a good time to sort of sit down and talk about why lighthouses mean so much to me and this mission that I'm undertaking. Now some of you may have seen the video I created on an online platform called BBC The Social which sort of very briefly explained my lighthouse mission but for those of you who haven't seen that video or who want to know more about it that's what I'm going to be discussing in this video and I guess the best place to start is where my love for lighthouses, you know, where did it all come from and where did it begin? So I was brought up in a seaside village and for those of you who have watched my channel for a while now you will know that I have a really deep connection with Scotland's coastline. I just love being by the sea. I find it a very rewarding experience, I find it beautiful and I find it really awakens my senses and I, I just love the coastline. And when I was a child growing up in this village I used to look out over the sea and across the sea you could see the other side of the Murray Firth and a part of Scotland known as Easter Ross, where Tarbert Ness Lighthouse resides. Now this is one of my favourite lighthouses in Scotland purely because I have this connection to it and I have been there a few times on this channel and you can see one of the videos that I've been up to Tarbert Ness up here if you're interested in watching. But I used to watch this lighthouse most nights blinking over the sea and I found it to be like a beacon of hope. I found that no matter what I'd been through that day, this light blinking across the sea filled me with so much hope and positivity. I felt really at peace when I saw this light and no matter what I was going through, this light would light up every night and I just found it very comforting in many ways. I don't know if any of you have watched the more recent take on The Great Gatsby that's got Leonardo DiCaprio in it, but in that film he is looking over the sea or the water where he's living to this house where the love of his life lives. And at the end of that house there's a jetty out into the water with this green light that flashes over the water every night. And he sees that green light flashing like a beacon of hope because he knows that woman that he's madly in love with lives at that house and that light is just like calling to him and giving him hope that one day he will be with her. And when I watched that film, it hit me that that's sort of what the lighthouse was for me. Not that there was a woman or a man in <laughs> the other side of the sea that I was waiting for me but and that I was in love with, but this sense of hope and this sense that this light was out blinking every night, giving me this comfort and hope for the future that some days I felt like I really needed. 
So that was where my love basically for lighthouses began and when I got into photography and began to travel around Scotland I found that when I went to the peninsulas or the locations that lighthouses were these locations were or made me feel things which nowhere else made me feel and what I mean by this is if you go to a lighthouse and it's a beautiful calm summer's day you've got beautiful tranquil sea, beautiful blue skies, lovely sort of reflections on the water you can feel like you're in paradise. Like literally it can be like some of the most beautiful, rugged and remote locations that Scotland has to offer. But you literally feel, like I say, like you're in paradise. They can be stunningly beautiful. But on the contrast to that, if you go to these lighthouse locations during stormy weather or in the winter, your senses can be heightened in ways that they aren't any other time. You can be out on these peninsulas or these wild remote locations and you are literally being battered by the elements. You've got gale force winds, torrential rain, sleet, snow, crashing waves and you can feel so alive but also vulnerable against the force of nature. And these lighthouse locations during these stormy times you feel things that you don't, wouldn't feel anywhere else because, like I say, you do feel quite vulnerable and up against the elements and it makes some fantastic locations for photography but also fantastic locations to go to to really feel that force of nature and to feel alive and I love that. I love that no matter what the weather is like, if you're at a lighthouse, whether it's a calming, hopeful, tranquil day or a rough, wild, stormy day, you feel things that you can't really feel in any other location. And another thing, the other thing that I absolutely love about lighthouses is when you're there at sunset and it goes into twilight and the light begins to flash. Like, that moment it starts flashing, I don't know, I feel this feeling inside that I can't quite explain. It makes me feel so alive and it's such a beautiful moment to be there and watch that light begin. And you will have seen what I mean by that if you watched one of the videos that I filmed on Isle Orange on the Isle of Skye at the start of the year where I was photographing the lighthouse at twilight. Your senses are just so heightened and watching that light come out, it's just, it's a beautiful experience. So this is where my love for lighthouses came from and I thought it would be quite an exciting challenge to set myself to travel around Scotland visiting all these lighthouses, learning about their heritage because they're a massive part of Scotland's heritage as they are with many other countries. But what I love so much about them is that they've stood the test of time, they've saved so many lives and some of the stories that are connected to these lighthouses are so incredible and humbling and you know having these people in the past living there and being up against the elements I just I love that sense of it's almost like a romantic story around it but like I say it's such a massive part of the country's history and heritage so I thought why not try and travel around and visit these lighthouses and photograph them all and learn their stories and like I said that's where where this mission came from and I if you watched my BBC video that I made about it I said that you know I've got no time limit for this mission It'll probably take me the rest of my life because it's very expensive to get to all these islands and parts of Scotland that the lighthouses are on but also some of them are in incredibly remote places that take a lot of time to get to and I will need the help of other people to make some of these lighthouse trips possible. But if it is possible I want to photograph them all and have this collection of photographs that I can be incredibly proud of and have learnt all about the history and heritage of these lighthouses firsthand and experienced them all firsthand. So that's my mission, don't know how long it's going to take but I'm going to try my best to complete it and I also thought it might be quite exciting to get you guys involved in some way and also at the end of this video to kind of let you know how you can help me complete this mission because I'm not going to be able to do it on my own and there's a few suggestions or ideas I've come up with that you may be able to help me so that I can complete it. So the first thing is if there's any lighthouses in Scotland that mean something to you or that you think are incredible for photography and that you would love to see me visit and photograph let me know in the comments below because it would be great to learn more about these lighthouses especially if you've got people who have you know you may have been related to one of the lighthouse keepers or you may live near one of these lighthouses and have stories or you may just have seen a lighthouse online and thought wow that lighthouse looks incredible 
um, and you think it would be a great location for me to visit. Let me know which lighthouses appeal to you the most and which ones you would most like to see me visit and discover and learn about. Secondly, as I mentioned briefly, doing this is going to be an incredible investment financially. Now, although Scotland's a relatively small country, a lot of these lighthouses are on islands, which will require me travelling both by car, ferry and boat to get to, and in all honesty, I can't afford to do that, especially for some of the more remote islands um, or islands that require a lot of island hopping. Like, there's no way that I can financially afford to do this. So the other day, I set up a Ko-fi page. Now, if you followed my channel for a while now, some of you will know that I was on Patreon for a few years, but I actually deleted my Patreon page this week. Now, for those of you who have donated to my Patreon page over the past few years, I'm incredibly grateful for your donations because I genuinely wouldn't have been able to go on some of the adventures I've been on and run my YouTube channel without those kind donations because those of you who did donate were paying for my monthly subscription to my video editing software and some of my travel expenses when I was going away on these trips. But I have got rid of Patreon this week because there's always been something about it that never quite sat with me. I always felt a bit bad about the fact that it was a monthly subscription and there wasn't anything I could really give people in return. And a lot of people were completely fine with that, but I just never felt that comfortable with it. And although I sent all my Patreons a Christmas card and those who donated quite a bit of money, I also sent a wee Christmas photo gift to them last year, I just didn't feel like it was quite enough. So I've now decided to get rid of my Patreon page and I've set up a Ko-fi page. And I've done this because it's not a subscription thing. It's basically, if you have three pounds lying around in your bank account and you want to do something with it, you can go onto my page and donate three pounds and all the money that is donated to my Ko-fi page will be going straight back into my YouTube channel and the majority of it will be going towards this lighthouse trip. So if you are, if you have, you know, a spare three pounds and you're kind enough to donate that, it would mean the absolute world to me because you'll be paying for any travel costs I incur to get to these locations and you would be helping me to do this mission. And in, you know, exchange for that, I'll be obviously filming my adventures, showcasing the photographs and I'll continue with all my YouTube stuff as well. So it would mean the absolute world to me if you have a spare three pound to go to my Ko-fi page and donate. Just to help me continue with YouTube and also most importantly to try and undertake and complete this mission when it's safe for me to get out and about and travel around Scotland again. Another thing I thought would potentially be able to help me is if any of you watching this live in Scotland and have holiday lets or accommodation in some remote parts of Scotland that have lighthouses or if you actually have or own lighthouse cottages yourself, I had the very luxury experience of having two nights in Ealing Shunach Lighthouse Cottage on the Isle of Skye at the start of the year and I should be going over to a lighthouse cottage in Orkney at some point in the next year once it's safe to, to go and travel again. But so many of these lighthouses are in remote locations and not only is it going to cost a lot for me to travel there, accommodation in some of these locations are incredibly expensive. Now I do undertake a bit of influencer work with accommodation providers. Basically because I can't afford to travel around Scotland, occasionally I will get an offer to stay in accommodation for two nights for free in exchange to featuring that accommodation on my YouTube channel. Now because for me when I go away travelling around Scotland, the accommodation is such a fundamental part of my experience. It's obviously my base, it's where I eat, it's where I sleep, it's where I travel from and often there's so many amazing unique accommodations in Scotland that really add to the experience of going away. So if any of you have unique unusual accommodation or you live in parts of Scotland which is very near a lighthouse and you would like to potentially feature or be a part of this journey and you can help me in some way, I would absolutely love to hear from you because any little help that'll, you know, any little thing that will help me complete this mission would, would mean the world. And if there's something I can give back to people who are kind enough to donate their time, money or property for a few days, you know, I, I will help in whatever way I can. I want to sort of make this mission quite a community thing. 
I want to sort of bring the whole Scottish coast together in some way to follow me on this journey, enjoy this journey, and also to sort of reach out and help people in their own personal businesses and endeavours. Especially right now with this whole COVID-19 lockdown, tourism is something that's really going to struggle to bounce back after this. So if you can help me complete my lighthouse adventure, then I can get in some way help you with your business adventure and dreams, then I'd love to work with you on that. And equally, if anybody knows anyone who owns boats or experiences out to parts of Scotland that have lighthouses that could potentially help me in some way get out to these places, then please also do let me know. But the majority of you obviously don't live in Scotland, but are still interested in this adventure. So the best thing you can do is recommend locations for me to go or be very kind in donating to my Ko-fi page. That's basically this video. I just thought it would be nice while I've got the time to sit down and discuss or tell you a little bit more about this mission, how you can help and what my sort of driving forces behind it are. And I hope that eventually once things get up and running again and the ball gets rolling that this will become quite a big adventure and mission and I'll be able to get involved with a lot of people and hopefully you know, just meet a lot of interesting people, learn a lot of interesting stories and share all of that with you all through the medium of YouTube and of course photography. As always I want to say a huge thank you for watching. We're obviously going through a very challenging time just now but it's meant a lot to me that a lot of you have been enjoying my lockdown debates videos. I have a few more lined up for the coming weeks so if you have been enjoying them there's more to come. I can't wait to get out and enjoy photography again but I've also been delving into a lot of things like macro photography especially in my garden and on my daily exercise which I'll probably share with you all a little bit more about that in the coming weeks because it's opened my eyes to a new world and I actually think I'm going to be doing a lot of macro photography moving forward so hopefully you'll look forward to seeing videos about that and hopefully it won't be too long before I can get out and about again and start creating some interesting outdoor landscape photography videos for you all. So yeah, if you're interested head over to my Kofi page, let me know what lighthouses you would like me to visit when it's safe for me to do so again and I look forward to hopefully seeing you all again next time.